Let's react to some shit. These She's got... are my 242. She has got a lot of cool stuff. If I was a home cook with very little cooking experience, I would be very intimidated by this tray. Chef Ryan Sao here, not your typical chef. And today I'm going to be reacting to $242 versus $13 fried rice, pro chef and home cook swap ingredients featuring my friend Esther Choi. Shout out to Eugene Jung for suggesting this video. He let me know by commenting on my uncle Roger reacts to Jamie Oliver's reaction video that I did. If there's something you want me to react to, let me know in the comments below. Speaking of comments below, if you like this video and are subscribed, you automatically enter yourself in for a chance to win an official Chef Ryan Sao, Chef Kiss Tea. Winner gets to pick the size. This contest is available to everyone worldwide. Winner announced on the next episode. So this is your last chance. Do it now. Like, subscribe, comment now. Do it now. The views and opinions expressed in this video are exactly that. They're just my views and opinions that I'm drawing from my years of experience being a culinary professional. So, uh, what was I gonna say? This video is meant to be for fun and educational purposes. So let's see who we piss off this week. If you're new to the show, I am a professional with 17 years of experience. I've defeated Bobby Flay on the Food Network show, beat Bobby Flay, as well as run the world-renowned kitchen of Beauty in Essex located right here in New York City. And with all that out of the way, let's react to some shit. Well, let's see, she's These got... These are my 242... Ooh. She has got a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, this is, um, you know, jumbo prawns, ebi. This is uh, some kind of snow crab. This is obviously a high quality Japanese rice, ginger, butter, shallots. It looks like MSG there, fish sauce, a lot of good stuff. Scallions, um, all right, eggs. Dollar fried rice ingredients. Fish roe and cheap Hi, ingredients. Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm a home Gabby. cook, and these I are don't my know $13. Gabby, but $13, jasmine rice. Like, it looks like a generic uh brand of jasmine rice soy sauce fried rice ingredients shrimp you guys don't need me to tell you that so they're gonna swap ingredients okay that again <laughs> see you later shrimp we got this and you know what i'm very confident esther is gonna make a sick fried rice she is a very talented chef and uh, you know, I, I don't know, I forgot this gal, the home cook's name, but if I was a home cook with very little cooking experience, I would be very intimidated by this tray. Where, the, where do you find this? <laughs> Let's do this, fried rice. So the fried rice I was planning to make was very special. King crab and spot prawn fried rice. It is quite pointy. I had some excellent ingredients to work with. Uh, they oh, had okay, Chilean cool. king so crab, have Ikura, spot, prawns, spot prawns, Chilean king and crab, Ikura, which is a red salmon roe from Japan. Mm. Pretty boy. Love all this stuff. It looks like an alien. It was all gonna be wok fried at a super high heat with nice. some koshi hikari rice, which is a short grain Japanese rice. Short grain rice being more of the sticky varietal versus a jasmine rice, which is a longer grain and not as sticky, but also it's um it's much more uh, aromatic. Excuse me versus a short grain rice. It was gonna be freaking delicious. That would have been freaking delicious. I feel delicious. like I lucked out on this end of the deal, but <laughs> I'm sure that Esther can come up with something really, really nice. With Gabby's recipe, I have ingredients that you remove. Okay, so jasmine rice, head on shrimp, eggs, jalapeno, vegetable oil, garlic, scallion, soy sauce, kosher salt, great. You can make a bang in fried rice. Likely with find that. in your pantry or your local grocery store. These and I know, I know uh, simple, Esther's going to knock it out technique, of the park. We can really amp it up. Thirteen dollars? Wow. Yeah, I would have actually guessed okay. the twenty something dollars based on just the shrimp, but this is pre inflation, right? Two hundred forty-two. <laughs> wow. Well, what did she say? Cannot How mess this one up. How that's much did for she sure. Think it was? So we have Chef Esther's recipe book right here. All oh, the ingredients, okay. no instructions. Recipes. Leave our work cut nice out. Nice handwriting, What's Esther. What's really important? My, I, I'm left-handed and I write like chicken scratch. <laughs> about fried rice is having everything ready so that yes. when you're cooking it, it's super, super fast and everything's ready to go. When she says everything's ready to go, the French terminology or the kitchen terminology is mise en place, which means to put in place. You're, you're setting up all your components, your ingredients, your equipment, so that you can execute it as efficiently as possible. Um, so she, you know, if you have to dice something up, you're not doing it as you're cooking the thing. You're doing, you know, you're doing all your cuts and prep before you actually have to execute the dish. Fortunately, 
pumpkin crab is not in my weekly grocery budget, so this is a new experience for me. So, can I talk to Rose? So good to see you. Good to see you too. What are you making today? Bring apart that King crab. crab you know, it's not for the faint fried of heart. Rice. Even Judging by the color, I believe he's already pre cooked. Like the big thing I need to do is figure out how to, you know, get out the good stuff. So, the nice thing about King Crab is it has a lot of joints. I'm doubling up, by the way. Basically, you're going to just pull apart too. or crack apart the legs. This is, oh, <laughs> a little goop. And the key to taking it apart is just kind of wiggling the meat out of the joint. So kind of crack against the way that it normally would and flow. Slowly pull it out. And then and you want to just gently take nice. the meat out. And you'll Great see job. some like spikes of cartilage. That should come out. It's not edible. There but we go. save it. You yep. So perfect. I mean, she, she clearly knows how to take direction well. And she's, uh, you know learning this on the spot and is executing it very well you go against the joint break it off and just gently pull out the meat this king crab was obviously cooked beforehand so she didn't have to do the cooking of it as well um that's fine you can use it in a totally stock fine. later and you want to make sure that you use the meat as nice and whole as right, you hey, possibly good can good job all right we have some beautiful Home cook, meat, you know hasn't worked with this ingredient before the crab's body like what's the best Pretty way good. to make that into something spectacular you're gonna just take the inside out and clean it really well and save it for your display you're gonna put your fried rice nice. right in okay. there because that's gonna be a really beautiful serving vessel for your fried rice i'll send you pics crab sometimes will have roe in it i think this particular varietal of crab the insides don't really offer much meat or uh, there isn't much edible in their period. So utilizing that crab shell as a serving vessel, yeah, will, will be a really nice touch. We'll look really <laughs> the nice. cleanest process, but we have our very, crab meat. It is very and messy and it has very low spine, yield. So um, I would call that a success. One thing that professional chefs are always looking out for is the yield of their ingredients. Basically, after they process something, how much usable product is there and uh you know the less yield you have for example something like a king crab or a lobster which you know at, at the end of the day there's not much left after you get rid of that shell that's a very low yield product which is usually why it has so much cost associated with it on shell on shrimp which i'm very excited for we're going to use the entire shrimp yes the shrimp head actually is one of the best parts there's so much yes. flavor and nice so i love shrimp heads and for the faint of heart don't knock it till you try it things that you can do with it gabby okay. was probably just so gonna she's use keeping the, the heads shrimp shelling the shrimp to quickly Great. saute into her uh, oh rice. she's taking off the but, tail too you know, you're okay be wasting cool. a lot of the other you can leave it on or off parts of the shrimp i have no okay we're just gonna have to that. De -veining. De -veining the Great shrimp start. because this is where the bodily waste yes live. next up is our spotted prawns i can indeed confirm they have spots on them so we're gonna rip their heads off. <laughs> we're gonna be so making metal. a shrimp stock that I'm gonna be cooking my rice nice. in. It's just gonna elevate the rice. It's gonna give a nice base seasoning. Yeah, Esther, so, yeah. utilizing every bit, she's going to make a, uh, I guess I'll call it a stock in this case, using the shrimp shells, extracting the flavor, and then she's gonna use that stock to cook the rice. He gave me awesome. scallions and garlic to use in the recipe, and I'm just gonna Good use touch. these. Those are those are the types of. Ooh, and she cut off the butt the and the root gave ends a of quick the scallions. Smash to the garlic, and what Sick. this does is releases some aroma. She from the garlic. she knows how, and you know, again, she's a professional, and I know what she's capable of. So she knows where and how to draw out maximum flavor, and what are those little steps, that extra one-two punch to really take her dish and over the, water. you know, High over heat, to the next level. Let it level. come to a slight boil and let it cook for about 30 minutes. We're just extracting all the flavor from the shrimp shells and your vegetable scraps. I'm gonna just basically remove the heads from the shrimp. Ta-da, pretty easy. My heads are off and now I'm just gonna go ahead and peel these shrimp. So my shrimp stock has been going for about half an hour. We're just gonna press on the shrimp shells okay. to extract as much flavor from it as possible. Yep. So now I'm gonna just devein it. I don't wanna waste as little as possible. Is. So I have my Even shrimp head, which I'm gonna be doing water, two but, different you know, things which, with. What's the most expensive piece of equipment in your kitchen? It's always going to be your trash can because everything you put in there is money into the trash can and out of your pocket. Making a shrimp oil 
and a mm. shrimp paste. We're gonna heat up some oil, mm. and I'm just using regular vegetable nice. oil. You have to be super careful when adding anything wet into hot oil. All right, we're good. It's just all the moisture she, evaporating. She has the oil fear, <laughs> which it hurts like like hell if, if you know it pops on. To I'm looking flavor. for a beautiful pink hue. So you can tell the bubbles have subsided a bit. My shrimp looks super like crispy. Look at that oil color. Look how beautifully Very green. nice. Wow. So she's making a stock with the shells. She's making an oil with the heads. The heads are the most flavorful part of the shrimp. Again, she's taking those steps and, you know, doing those little extra things that will really make an outstanding product. Is. You hear that? Okay, so my shrimp oil is ready. And these shrimp heads that are super crispy, we're gonna be making a beautiful shrimp paste. Mm. I don't throw anything out. Maximize, yeah. maximize, maximize. She is truly a chef. She's utilizing every single bit. Nothing goes to waste. What a nice touch. So not only did she manage to extract flavor into the oil with the heads, but she's gonna make a paste out of it. Hell and yeah. my prawns are cleaned. And Gabby, here's something really fun. You take the head of the spot prawns, deep fry it, and serve that on the side, and that will give nice crunchy element to the mm, fried rice. Mm -hmm. And that's like my favorite element of spot prawns. Same here. Uh, I used to have a sushi restaurant at one point, or rather, I should say, I worked at a sushi restaurant at one point, and uh, on you know those big sushi sashimi platters, we always had spotted shrimp, or we referred to it as ebi, and we always took the heads and deep fried it, and th that was always one of my favorite things. Fried prawn heads, done. Now it's time to make our shrimp paste. Most importantly, mm. the mortar and cool. pestle. Mortar I feel pestle. like it's very underutilized in the kitchen. I it agree. It releases so much flavor, and it's so fun to use. We're gonna add our shrimp heads, and just Crush grind it up it. to okay. a fine paste. What's cool about this shrimp paste, you can kind of leave it in a jar in your fridge and utilize it whenever you're cooking. You want to add a little bit of umami into, you know, your noodles nice. or your fried rice. This is what you add. I'm going to add two cloves of garlic mm. for more flavor. All right. Getting a workout today. I don't need to hit the gym. A little bit of soy sauce nice. in here. Okay. That shrimp oil we need earlier, I'm gonna add a little bit of that. Cool, you know, as she's, ooh, all right, a that's a nice soy. looking paste. You know, so she put a little oil in there for lubrication, probably some of the flavor. The soy sauce is gonna give salt, but the salt is also gonna help preserve that paste. Uh, and she put in garlic for sauce. flavor, add very a nice. a bit more oil. Mix it together. It's becoming more like a loose paste. I do wanna push it through a sieve. So nice. that it's more fine. I mean, I can't help myself right now. I have to taste it. Go Esther. Oh, that's wild. Yep, I know. And there we have that's it. Gonna, Look what that's we did with just simple anything. shrimp. Holy cow. You know, with the straining of the paste, she's adding that level of refinement so she doesn't put any of the shells or any of the crap into her fried rice. She's just extracting the pure shrimp head flavor. And it sounds gross. And by itself, well, I, I'm going to think it's delicious as fuck. I would love to, you know, just drizzle that on on anything, really. It's just, that's just going to be a ton of flavor. And if it's too much for you to handle, that's okay. Because this these types of products are something you add in small bits. And a, a little bit goes a long way. And, you know, you may not be able to taste it purely. But when it's put into a context of a dish, um, it mellows out. And it just kind of uplifts the up lifts the entire thing. A nice Just touch. sauteing it and calling it a day. This is what you call maximizing flavor. Now it's time to prep my aromatics. This is a finger chili, which, you know, I don't know whose finger is quite the length. So Gabby's gonna be making an aromatic oil for her fried rice using garlic, ginger. I love fresh ginger. Scraping the ginger clean with the spoon. That's actually my favorite way to clean ginger uh, because it's the safest. You know, you can literally just go to town. It scrapes off really easily. You also don't lose that much product because you're literally only scraping the skin. And if it goes up against your fingers, it won't cut you. Eat. So. Hey, she's got Done. good knife skills, too. I'm gonna too. wash my hands, because that's spicy, and yeah. I'll touch my eye later and think, oh my god, what happened? <laughs> so Gabby cool. said- Cool, so yeah, so she, uh, Gabby's a home cook, but she's garlic. clearly I feel like a instead very, of just you know, using garlic in cook. the fried rice, between or how she the stock, or the oil, the, the crab, maybe the shrimp making and everything. a garnish with it. Doing great. So I'm gonna be making garlic chips. 
I'm Ooh, just gonna nice. slice it thin on the Japanese mandolin. Japanese mandolin. Confidence Best is mandolins key in the world, and they're the cheap as hell. Every kitchen slow, needs it. Amazon links down below if you want to get one. Then you're gonna cut yourself. If you go too fast, you're gonna cut yourself. Then we're gonna turn on our pan, add oil. It doesn't have to be completely hot. We can kind of bring it up together. So I'm yep. just gonna add our garlic at this In point. fact, I would Key recommend it that it way because um, if you put it in too hot, the edges will burn before the center is cooked. So it's actually, to me, it's actually better to start in cold oil. Definitely watch your garlic, babysit it, because once you turn around, you're gonna burn your garlic. It's mm -hmm. ready. So at this point, we're gonna take nice. it out. And she's taking it out like darken. a shade before it's done because the oil is so hot, the product will carry over cook even though it's been removed As from the heat source. On the paper towel. So nice touch. And garlic chips. How can I not? Mm, perfect. I have Sweet. my shrimp oil here because I'm going to add the garlic nice. oil to the shrimp oil. Shit. Now we Shit. have shrimp and garlic oil. Okay, so time for the rice, the most important part. Hence, it's fried rice. Chef Esther was kind enough to prepare the rice for me. Oh, it's a kosher hikari okay. rice. As I mentioned in the uh, Uncle Roger reacts to Jamie Oliver's egg fried rice video, day old rice is always the best way to go. Do not use bagged rice. No bagged rice in fried rice. You do that, I'm gonna come find you. I'm gonna come find you and you're gonna regret it. I gifted Gabby cooked kosher curry rice that's a day old. That's a homie right there. For fried that's rice a homie right there. Good looking. The good looking out. When you good have day out, old Esther. rice works so perfectly. The oils and the vegetables and the aromatics kind of rehydrate it and actually makes for the perfect texture. And in this case, we're gonna do two cups. Normally I would wash my rice multiple times, but I think I'm just gonna give this one a rinse because it's not too starchy. Two cups of our yeah, shrimp broth. Yeah, uh, that's definitely true. Uh, for rices like sushi rice, you definitely wanna wash it a few times to remove excess uh, starch. Something like a jasmine rice is not as sticky uh, or doesn't have as much starch, which is why the end product is not as sticky as something like a short grain rice, which uh, just naturally has more starch on it, which is why you wanna wash it off. So as soon as it comes to a boil, you're gonna lower it to your lowest setting, put your lid on, and then let it steam. And uh, notice, no bagged rice. No bagged rice. Fuck you, Jamie Oliver. Okay, so we're gonna check on our rice, and I'm just gonna use a fork to fluff gently it up. Nice. fluff it. And that also helps remove some excess moisture. It has a slight bite which is what I want, because I don't want it to be mushy, since we are gonna recook it when we fry the rice. And now this is my trick when I do it at the restaurants and we need rice for fried rice, we will spread it out on a sheet tray and let it kind of dry out like that. Nice. One thing I Great. really, really hate. Someone actually mentioned in the comments of the Uncle Roger, Jamie Oliver video of doing this exact technique. I, I mentioned in the video, day old rice is best, which I still stand by. But if you need rice on the fly, uh, this is definitely the best way to go about it. Put it on a large flat surface, spread it out, and it'll dry out uh, quick, relatively quick. Fried rice is when it's mushy. This will really help prevent that. Time to prep my veggies. We have some green peas. Okay. It's always really inviting nice. when you open up the pod and you just see all little peas sitting there. They look really happy to see you. Some rainbow carrots. Mm. Ooh, nice and look touch. at the middle. Very what a pretty. cool vegetable. A shallot. I love shallot. Shallots, love it's like shallots. an onion on steroids. Last but not least, some broccoli rob. I love the texture nice. of I broccoli I love broccoli rob. rob. I like, like that bitterness of broccoli that kind of rob. Balances and I think it would go great in fried rice. Nuts. I've never had broccoli rob in fried rice, so this will be a first for me. Clearly, Gabby didn't send me much vegetables to work with, but, yeah, but it's that's okay. All you need. We're gonna still maximize. Scallions, I'm actually gonna use in two different ways. Nice. This is how I would do it, and I think this is the way Esther's gonna do it, is she's gonna cut the stem ends, cut them relatively, relatively small. This is just what I predict. And she's gonna put it in the beginning phase of the cooking, and then she's gonna use the green parts as the garnish. I know I mentioned in the, in again, the Uncle Roger, Jamie Oliver video, you don't put scallions in at the beginning. I should have been uh, you know, a bit more clear on that, especially the green ends, which again, 
become slimy. The green parts, if you saute them too early, will emit slime and you know a lot of moisture and they will wilt down, but the root ends are a lot more robust and will hold up to cooking. Great. With the whites, I'm actually gonna use to kind of flavor the oil when I cook the fried rice. Mm. This will act as more of like your crunchy onion veg. And the greens, I'm gonna use as a topping. A little milder right. in flavor go. and can almost Ooh, act like a nice. She's cutting it on a so bias. I'm slicing these Get on those a long stems. bias. Look at that knife work. At the Pro right there. I like to call this sexy scallions. And I like to put it mm. in cold water. Soaking it into it so cold water. Slimy, um, also, you know, like, the cold water will, I think it's cold water. Now, Number one, we'll remove some of the harshness scraps. from that's where the a lot onions, of the spice that alkalinity, from, but it'll also to cause it to curl up and look a lot more decadent. Too much spice, and our veggies are ready to go. Nice, and look at that. Time She's staging out all of these on plants. All right, going for the eggs. handle this part. There we go. Get them nice and whisked up. More of the right color today. <laughs> Gabby, thank you so much for sending me eggs. I was very afraid that I wouldn't have eggs. I saw this on TikTok, actually. Thanks for the inspiration, TikTok. But it's something called golden fried rice. And what it is, it's separating the egg yolks from the white and using mm. the yolk, almost like a fat emulsifier, mm. and coating the rice with the egg yolk. It's almost okay. like using a butter. Say what you will about TikTok. You know, there's a lot of filler and a lot of bullshit on there. Uh, but at the same time, there have been many times where I'll see some kind of cooking thing and I'll learn something or see something that I haven't seen before. That's a cool technique. I'm using okay. the yolk okay. for this. All right, our rice is ready to go. We got ourselves a wok. So Gabby's yeah, going to be making her fried wok. rice in a wok. Only way I know to do the, the Chef Esther has a cool trick for fixing your stovetop so that it's good for a wok. Here's a tip for someone who wants to use a wok at home. You can actually turn the burner grate upside down to create a cradle for your wok to rest in for maximum heat exposure. So uh, a traditional wok has a rounded bottom and they do sell those things that you put on top of your burner so it doesn't slide around as much, but they also sell woks with flat bottoms where you wouldn't have to do this. This technique may not work for your stove depending on what kind of stove you have. You know, if it's the flimsy grates that are over each individual burner, they move may move around a lot. If they sit on top of your burner, it may shift the thing and not ignite properly. You may have to readjust it. So I personally wouldn't recommend it. It is a hack, but I wouldn't do it myself. You have to season your wok. Mm -hmm. So seasoning your wok means that you're coating your wok with oil so nothing sticks. There's a few ways that you can do this, but the way that I like to do it is get your wok screaming hot, mm -hmm. add oil, mm -hmm. swirl it around, and then you're gonna shock it in cold water. Here we go. And bring it back and do it all over again three times. And every time you season your wok, it's acting as a sealant. So you're creating layers. Cooking in a wok is not for the faint of heart. You're gonna have killer forearms though after this. Do not skip this step. I've seen so many times people trying to use a wok and they ask me, why is everything sticking? Because you haven't seasoned your wok. Mm -hmm. Every time you use your wok, you should season it. Totally agree with that. Uh, the way she mentioned, there's many ways to do it. And there are, the way I've seen it uh, at my old Chinese restaurant is, you know, they would coat it with oil and they would just burn the fuck out of it on top of the uh, wok burner, which is a really high powered, basically almost like a jet engine of fire. Um, and they burn the shit out of it, coat it with oil, burn the shit out of it. And it's kind of similar to this. Um, you know, we didn't really shock it in water. We would, you know, again, just kind of turn it and really let the flames hit it on all ends, let it cool, put the oil. In many ways, it's kind of a similar principle, but rather than um, shocking it with water, we would just kind of let it cool, coat it with oil, it cools, the pores of the, the metal shrink again, encapsulating that oil. And if you do that a few times, you get a, the same effect. Everything is gonna happen really quickly because that's the beauty of fried rice. It's like a very, very quick cook. Add a quarter cup of oil, Get the oil super, super hot, and we're gonna add our eggs. Here we go. When you add your eggs, it's gonna 
fluff up yep. and double in size. There you go. This is so what beautiful. I was talking about oh in the gosh, Uncle Roger video. Do the eggs before. first. This is really cool. She's letting it so cook a little too long here. you want to get that excess oil out of the eggs, but the egg itself should be very fluffy, and you can set that aside. Cool. Egg's okay. done. I, I've seen it done like that, too. That's not my style, but, you know, there again, many ways to do the same thing. I have thing, so. not been gifted with a wok, so I'm going to be using the second best thing. It's a cast iron skillet. There you go. I love the yep. cast iron because it retains a lot of heat. Yes, it retains a lot of heat. So one of the big things I said about a wok is when you have it in a professional kitchen, it's a very high-powered heat source. Because of the high-powered heat source, despite the wok being such a thin grade of metal, uh, the, the wok stays really hot no matter what for the most part. You can kind of replicate that with a cast iron because it's so thick and the heat source doesn't need to be nearly as crazy uh, powerful. The main thing is that the cooking vessel ret retains that high heat, which is why it's so good for something like steak cookery, where you need that, you know, high, consistent high heat. The only downside of a cast iron is that it's just super heavy and you can't stir fry or toss the product in the pan very easily. Unless you got crazy biceps and forearm strength. First thing, mm. fried eggs. Beautiful shrimp oil. Okay, we nice. Just add our So eggs. she's using a While separate cooks, pan for her eggs. Cast nice iron touch. Hot. You know, add doesn't have to be in one pan for sure. Add my scallion whites. Okay, so we're yep. making scallion this like, beautiful oh, scallion oil in, there too, in the shrimp oil. Okay, first thing, my aromatics. You're adding a quarter cup of oil. Then you're gonna start with your aromatics, your scallions, your ginger, nice. your garlic, your red chili, your shallots. Mm. Mm, that smells so good. I, yes. Call me aromatics I, for a reason. I'm watching These the video eggs, and I know it's great. Good. I'm actually gonna turn it off the heat and set it aside. Okay. And add my jalapenos. Nice. Saute that slightly. Add our shrimp. Slightly season it. It's important to season every layer. Yes. We're cooking the shrimp season about 80% of the flavor. way, and we'll take it out. Then we got carrots. Nice. If you're doing a walk, you have to like, you know, you gotta own it. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just showing his boss. Right oh, she's got some sass. Got action. some attitude. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Got some air yeah, time. Girl. Go Toss get it. In. Go so get it. So excited about the broccoli rob. The chef Esther special. All right. Cool. I would put the broccoli rob first. It'll you know uh, kind of wilt the easiest and burn the easiest. So you just want to kiss it with some heat. Heat. Don't, wanna go I don't too want crazy. any more color. And I'm gonna take everything out. Let's okay. see, what do I got? My prawns, and they're gonna be the last thing I put in before I start adding in my rice. And the prawns get slightly pink, 80 to 90% cooked. Then you add your rice. Nice. I'm only gonna use about half this rice because the one thing that I do know about woks is that you don't want to crowd a wok. And I also have to consider how much I can fit in my very special crab bowl. Mm -hmm. At this point, yep. we are gonna fry our golden rice. And the reason why I took out the shrimp is because I don't want anything to steam. If your pan is too- Ooh, she doesn't want anything to steep. Basically, when you say that you're letting something steep, it's, you know, essentially, you're letting it sit in moisture, I guess is the way I'm gonna put it. Uh, it. You know, the rice has moisture and you put a lot of rice into the pan and you let the shrimp sit, it's going to steep. It's gonna steam in there and it's gonna continue to cook and that's not necessarily what you want. Chances are your rice is gonna steam, which I don't want. I think I'm gonna add a bit more oil okay. here. So I'm cooking the egg whites in the center. I didn't wanna just pour it over because I want it to slightly cook before I fold it in because we don't want anything to be mushy. You're okay. cooking the egg whites so it's almost all there. And Keeping then it in motion, it breaking it up rice. into little, you know, that look? little We're gonna bits and pieces. Now, so I'm adding in all of my extra garnishes I'm gonna turn this heat a little bit lower. Not really looking to cook anything at this point, so I'm gonna add a nice little knob of butter. Mm. A little knob. I'm gonna add in my peas. Nice. My egg, I guess, just kind of gets thrown in there. I'm just gonna kind of rip it into some shreds. I don't okay. know if that's how we're gonna do it, All but right. why not? I would have preferred to see her, uh, you know, at the. Uh, at this point, I thought she was going to put the egg in first and kind of stir it around and put in the other ingredients and the egg would break up as she works it. That method, I think, is, you know, you have to be a little bit more experienced because you have to work really fast so that you don't overcook the egg. The way I would have done this is I would have kind of lifted up the wok, pushed every all the product to the side, put some oil, and then pour the egg, in, raw egg into that, and then incorporate that in if, if I were at this phase. We're gonna add our shrimp and our aromatics back in there. Okay. Give that a toss. 
Remember this beautiful paste? Mm. This is basically our MSG. Start with half. We don't want it to be too salty. Yep, because paste as you seasoning. cook it, you're going to get rid of more moisture. Uh, and what's the enemy of flavor? Water. But the more moisture slash water you remove, the more you're concentrating the flavor. So she's being very careful, not jumping the gun and adding everything in first and risking an overly salty product. I'm gonna go ahead and add <laughs> Just like, tiny bit fuck of salt. it, I'm gonna put it all super, in. Super, super important <laughs> that you taste as you go. Gotta put the crab in. Got a little ahead of myself. Can't forget the crabs. Whoa, this is nuts. I'm having a blast right now. One last thing that I'm gonna do here, some oil on the side, because what we're gonna do is make crispy rice, mm. flatten this out like so. Mm. Lower the heat to nice. a medium and kind of just let the bottom get super crispy. But at this point, it's done. Seasoning, nice. white pepper, fish sauce, show you. White pepper, yes. White pepper is, uh, I feel like one of the, yeah, I guess underappreciated ingredients in Asian cookery. You know, that black pepper is not indigenous to Asia, but white pepper is. Uh, and if you really pay attention to a lot of soups and certain flavor profiles, you'll you'll pick it up. Toss it all together, and then you're gonna finish with your greens and nice. some sesame oil. Finish with sesame oil, uh, very floral, very fragrant, well, not floral, like nutty, you know, sesame-y. Sesame uh, anyway, uh, always, added at the very end you you know that has does not have a high smoke point at all and you just you want to you want to retain the pure sesame oil flavor so you put it at the very end it gets heated up gets a bit more fragrant and that's it okay time to plate i have the body of the crab that will basically serve as the plate itself so very full circle some nice scoops of my fried rice and just go ahead and dump it right in. Get a little egg in there, prawn in there, yeah. So I might just do one guy in here. Oh, it looks so good. I'm gonna go ahead and garnish with some of this scallion, just add some nice Dude. brightness. We'll just put a yeah. couple more chunks of this And then she's gonna crab. put the ikura on top of that. Dish, truly. Okay, last but so not least, good. I'm going to finish my garnishing with the Not ikura. too big of a fan of this how the egg was done nice in this saltiness. one, but uh, I, feel I would pretty regardless good about still this eat the plating, shit out of that. I think with the prawns and the prawn heads, pretty proud of myself if I do say so. Now good we're job. just gonna garnish with our fried egg. Nice. Remember our beautiful like scallion greens that we sliced on a bias really nicely. And then our garlic chips. Ooh. Now I would serve this as is. Wow. I'll bring this to the table sizzling like this and it always makes a beautiful presentation. And then you just serve table side. <gasps> oh my God. Both beautiful. of those dishes look pretty outstanding. Wow, Good smells. work. You know, Gabby's presentation, I, I think could have used a, a little work, but again, her first time making this dish, uh, real, you know, and being a home cook, not a professional, Really good, really solid, you know, especially for a first effort. I could totally see her making it even better if she did it a couple more times. And Esther's fried rice, there's, you know, it's it's thirteen dollars worth of ingredients, but you can really see how far technique can take your food. With the right technique, you can make you can make uh, simple food so outstandingly delicious. This looks like it belongs in a gourmet restaurant. It smells Definitely good. smells like very aromatic with like all the seafood. Mm. Just a little, you know, it's not too much, so. Big. We like. Oh my gosh. Mm. And the rice, the texture of the rice. Yeah. You did a great job with that. Oh, thank you. With yeah. buying it. The seafood has so much flavor. It perfumes the rice completely. Mm. This is perfection. Great job. Uh, like I said, from what I observed from Gabby, I definitely think this rice would will come out outstanding. It was her first time making it, but you can definitely see that she has a lot of experience in the kitchen, or at least that's what I'm assuming, and uh, executed it really well, especially for the first time. Good job. But now you got to try my humble yeah. fried rice. Oh, I'm so impressed. Mm, those garlic chips and... Uh, the egg yolk mixed into the rice, the shrimp oil, and you know, she also added the garlic oil from making the garlic chips. Just so nice. Like, this Very is not what nice it looks like when I make this, that's for sure. Mmm. Mmm. 
I'm tasting some of the garlic. I'm tasting some of the aromatics. It feels really well-rounded and the garlic really adds a nice little touch. So good. I'm gonna end the video here. Um, very cool, Esther, awesome. Uh, you know, I'm sure if you made uh, your rice with the ingredients that you picked, it would would have been outstanding. But again, you're a professional and I know that you've uh, written many recipes. I'm not sure if you have a book, but I'm pretty sure that you've put recipes out on websites and stuff like that numerous times. So Esther clearly uh, using her abilities as a chef can write down very clear and concise uh, uh, ingredients list as well as a recipe with the method so that someone like Gabby can execute this dish. Again, Gabby seems very uh, like a very experienced home cook, so she's definitely a step ahead from your average person in the kitchen. I'm pretty sure a novice would be very intimidated by that dish. And then again, uh, with Esther using Gabby's picked ingredients, um, she had very she was had very little to work with, but through her technique and execution, made to me what I view as an outstanding dish. So really good for the both of them. If I'm gonna score this one out of 10, dead serious, no bullshit, I would give them both, you know, I'll, I'll give Gabby a nine because I do think the presentation could have been a bit more refined. That is a nitpick though. And with Esther, I'm gonna give her a 9.8 because honestly, I think, uh, you know, if I was working on the fly, I probably wouldn't have gone that refined personally. Um, you know, she just took those added steps, making the shrimp paste, making the shrimp oil, making the garlic chips. Outstanding. Very cool. Hope you guys had fun. Again, let me know in the comments below who you'd like me to react to next. Speaking of commenting, make sure you like, you're subscribed, enter yourself in for a chance to win a t-shirt. Shout out to all my patrons, especially the ones on the sous chef level. And uh, with that said, I'm Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.